Welcome dear learners. Today we are going to discuss about volcanic eruptions disaster management. So before discussing the management of volcanic eruption, let us discuss the various facts and characteristics, types and damage that are caused by the volcanic eruptions. A volcano is an opening or rupture in earth's surface that allows magma magma is the hot liquid or semi liquid rock or volcanic ashes gases smoke that escape from the surface of the earth from the crust of the earth they are generally found where the tectonic plates come together basically where there is a fracture within the tectonic plates maybe it is a constructive type of tectonic plate conservative or destructive type so this magma comes out from that uh, ruptures or uh, the point where the tectonic plates meet but they also occur in the middle plates due to volcanic hotspots sometimes uh, the tectonic plates have some hotspots we can uh, call it an, an opening where from the magma comes out a volcanic eruption is when lava and the gases are released from volcano sometime explodes the, through the process of explosion so basically the hot lava that is called lahar with mud flows dust ashes and fragmental materials toxic gases and smoke suits comes out of these volcanic eruptions the most dangerous type of volcanic eruption is called glowing avalanche basically the when we correlate uh, the um, flowing of magma with the snow avalanche so in avalanche the flowing material is snow but here it's a magma which is very hot around 1200 degree fahrenheit and this glowing avalanche which is very freshly erupted magma flows down uh, through the sides of the volcanoes basically the paths it decides the paths where from it will come out they travel quickly and reach the temperature of 1200 degree centigrade uh, uh, 1200 degree fahrenheit so other uh, as well uh, as i was discussing about other hazards that are the volcanic uh, uh, fallout <clears throat> ashes lahar and the uh, population volcanoes often cause population displacements and food shortage so before going further let us discuss what are the various uh, mechanisms through which a magma comes out so volcanic eruptions uh, arise through main three mechanisms first is gases release under decompression causing magmatic eruptions first of the entrapped gases that comes out and through that um, uh, decompression process the magma also comes out with the gases then another process is the thermal contraction from chilling on contact with water causing uh, proto magmatic eruptions basically this happens in the oceans so when the magma comes out it directly comes in contact with the cold water the third one is ejection of entrained particles during stream eruptions causing pretic eruptions so these are the three mechanisms through which the magma comes out but based on the volcanic eruptions or uh, the activities uh, or nature of eruptions of the volcanoes can be divided into three types of uh, the volcanoes uh, no sorry two types of the volcanoes first day one is the explosion type of volcanoes where in volcano eruptions occur through a central pipe by breaking and blowing of crustal surface due to violent and explosive gases accumulated deep within the earth such volcanoes are very destructive because they release the gases smoke and they spread for a lot of population gets involved and the gases spread through uh, i mean through the air through the large area the another one is fsu or fissure type of a volcano 
it's basically uh, it basically occur along a long fracture fault or fissure we can call or there is a, a slow upwelling of magma from below and the resultant lava spreads over the ground surface the speed of lava movement depends upon the nature of magma a volume of magma slope of the ground surface and temperature conditions basically this is not much destructive as compared to the uh, explosive type of volcanic eruptions so going further discussion uh, we basically categorize or we measure the volcanic explosivity i mean the the volume of the explosion that happens in the volcanic eruption based on the scale called volcanic explosivity index so this index is also called vei is a scale that uh, stretches from 0 to 8 and measures the uh, measures the strength of the eruptions it is used by the Sim, uh, smith sonian institute uh, institutions of uh, global volcanism program in assessing the impact of historic and prehistoric lava flows it operates in a way similar to rector scale for earthquakes in that each interval in value represents the tenfold increase in the magnitude in logarithmic scale basically the vast majority of the volcanic eruptions are between 0 to 2 but there are some uh, some uh, incidents where the volcanic eruptions uh, i mean vei index goes up to 7 so the biggest ever recorded volcanic eruption was in mount tambora uh, on sambawa island of indonesia in 1815 and it measures uh, the volcanic explosivity index of seven and uh, it was classed as a super closal so the second biggest volcanic eruption happens in 20th century 1912 and it was in nova ruta uh, that is in alaska usa and was measured and volcano explosivity index of six and uh, the long lasting effect mount pinto uh, Pinatabu of Indonesia erupted in 1991 and uh, it spread the volcanic gases and ashes up to 10 square, uh, cubic kilometer <coughs> and the long, <coughs> sorry, longest continuous volcanic eruptions was in Kilau island of Hawaii <coughs> one of the most active volcanoes of the world so these were the some facts about the volcano explosivity index so here in the picture we can also see what is the spread of the eruption so here we can see the volcanic eruption of the uh, around 10 uh, 5 to 6 it is about 10 square uh, cubic kilometers so this is a spread uh, the based on the wall vei index how much is the spread and uh, what is the area that covered by the volcano so before further going in discussion uh, on the basis of periodicity of volcanoes are divided into three major categories that are <clears throat> that is active volcanoes dormant volcanoes and extinct volcanoes basically the active volcanoes are which are connected with the volcanic hotspots that can in any future time that can uh, lead to a volcanic eruptions and dormant maybe in near future or in uh, future it can be an active volcano but in case of extinct volcanoes there is no chance that the volcanic eruptions can happen so the types of the volcanoes uh, majorly are characterized in uh, categorized in a uh, five categories first one is hawaiian type Hawaiian eruptions are type of volcano eruption named after the Hawaiian volcanoes with which this eruption types is hallmark. Hawaiian eruptions are the calmest type of volcano eruption characterized by effusive eruptions of uh, very fluid 
basalt type lavas which uh, low gases content basically which I, I was earlier discussing the two types based on the nature of eruptions was explosive and the if if you or fissure type this is the example of the fissure type hawaiian uh, volcanic eruptions the volume of ejected material from the hawaiian eruption is less than half of the found in other eruptions basically it is uh, the rupture so the eruptions are the uh, less as compared to other types of the volcanic eruptions steady production of small amount of lava builds around the large area and maybe it gets cooled down and it creates uh, the material uh, in and around the fracture eruptions are not centralized at the main summit as uh, with basically there is no a central pipe no uh, like there's a mouth of the mountain and there is no central pipe it basically happens around the fissure of uh, the fault the second one is strombolian type of volcanic eruptions uh, it's named after the stromboli which uh, has been erupting nearly continuous for the century and it is basically characterized by uh, the bursting of the grasses uh, bubbles with magma so basically the gases that are entrapped in the magma that comes out of the central pipe of the volcano you can see in the picture also how the gases come out like uh, fireworks so these gas bubbles with the magma accumulate and coalesce into a large bubble called gas slugs these grow large enough to rise through the uh, lava column basically from which the column central pipe from which the lava comes out upon the reaching the surface a difference in the air pressure these burst in loop and throw the magma to the uh, larger area like uh, when there is a bursting of the soap bubble <coughs> we can see the how uh, further the sprinkles kind of uh, the droplets of the water uh, spread basically same kind of thing also happen here and during the eruptions, these uh, blasts occur often in every few minutes. So there is the visible blast in such kind of volcanic eruptions. And the third one is Vulcanian type of volcanic eruptions, named after the volcano uh, type of uh, mountain. So it is basically uh, the intermediate viscous magma within the volcano makes it difficult to uh, vesiculate gases to the escape. Basically, gases get entrapped and they cannot get out of the magma. Similar to Stromboyan eruptions, this leads to the buildup of high gas pressure eventually popping out the gap holding the magma and resulting in the explosion. Basically, when the uh, beneath gas gets uh, uh, increase in the pressure so it at the same time when the pressure gets increased because of the high temperature this gas comes out at once and creates an explosion however unlike storm uh, strombolian type of uh, eruptions ejected lava fragments are not aerodynamic means like they are not aerodynamic means they are not well dissolved with the gases this is due to the higher viscosity of volcanic magma because of the viscosity of the lava is very high as compared to strombolian type they are also more explosion type than the strombolian counterpart and they can spread up to five to ten uh, kilometers so these are quite more dangerous than the strombolian type of volcanoes and another one is alien type of volcano is uh, basically named after the mountain Peli in uh, Martin Nikyu uh, in 1902 so a large amount of dust smoke ash and lava fractures are blown out of the volcanic center pipe you can see from this this is a typical example of the billion type of volcanic eruption and the material collapse upon itself forming a fast mullowing pro call uh, pro pyroclastic flow then uh, known as block and ash flow basically the magma comes out of it gets uh, frozen and it builds about the blocks in and around the central pipe 
So these lands, uh, basically, the, when the, this pyroclastic flow happened, they create, create landslides to so make this Pallian eruption is one of the most dangerous in the world, capable of tearing through the population areas and causes serious loss in life. And then last one is Pallian type. It's, called, it's also called the vicious type of volcano. Uh, it's basically named after the Mount Vicious in uh, 79 AD. The gases of vesculate and accumulate as they rise through the magma conduit. These bubbles uh, agglutinate and once they reach the central pipe, 75% of the volume of magma, they explode basically. So here are the various kind of uh, the uh, I mean the pictures of the different this first first is uh, the Icelandic eruptions basically it happens through the fracture of the land or the surface where from the magma comes out. Second one is Hawaiian type C, the lava comes out of this. There is no gases entrapped. Strombolian definitely the gases are entrapped and this also smoke it's not spread to further locations but there are some entrapped gases which comes out of this uh, uh, this magma then uh, we have uh, vulcanian type see the spread is more as compared to strombolian and Pallian type this is pyroclastic magma this spreads here and the population living in here definitely gets affected vegetation gets affected and Pallian type, this is the basically the uh, gases and the smoke comes uh, out of this and it can spread to the farther locations. So these are the different pictures of the volcanoes. So what are the basically uh, the same picture for, uh, earlier I was showing you. This is uh, the caldera volcano. Basically it's only composed of the volcanic gases and nothing else, no lava. Then Fisher type, which I was discussing, then Hawaiian type, there is no gases. Strombolian, there are gases and trapped. So based on the, uh, what is we call the, the explosivity or the destruction, Pallian type are more dangerous than as compared to Hawaiian type of volcanic corruptions. So what are the various uh, areas where the volcanoes are spread in the world? Basically, volcanoes are spread on the three major belts in the world. First is Circum-Pacific Belt, this area. In this area, this one, this portion is called Ring of Fire. This area is spread uh, or uh, encircled by the various types of volcanoes. Uh, they are very active in this area. Second one is mid-continental belt, this area of the Europe and also uh, this Himalayan portion it is uh, basically uh, uh, having active volcanoes. And last one is mid-Atlantic ridge belt, this the west coast of the USA and Northern America and Southern America. This is the major belts, belts of the volcanic eruptions. And uh, when we further go inside the various facts of the volcanic eruptions, the causes, uh, what we have earlier understood from the various facts, volcanic eruptions are basically having two uh, major causes. First one is the tectonic plates, the ridge, the fissure type of volcanic eruptions. You can see here uh, two plates when they meet there is some uh, vent out coming from there like here this is the hot spot where the fissure type of the volcanoes are coming out and second reason is when the mountain central pipe is connected with the volcanic hot spot so that is directly connected with the mantle or the core of the earth so these are the two types of the reasons that are uh, of this volcanic eruptions. So the, now discussing what are the various hazardous impacts of the volcanic eruptions. First are advancing the lava flows that is also known as lahar. Basically what we say that it is having the temperature around 1200 degree Fahrenheit. So definitely this is the very hazardous having high temperatures and whatever thing comes on the way of that uh, magma that gets melted. And second when 
is war fallout of volcanic material. What we are saying that in Strombolian type of volcanoes, the gases which are entrapped into the magma, they spread by bursting and uh, the small pieces of lava, they, they are spread to further locations. And the heat of uh, lava that ignites fire and burns house and vegetation, that is also a hazardous impact and the emission of the uh, harmful gases like uh, carbon dioxide, uh, sulfur uh, dioxide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, carbon sulfide, car uh, carbon disulfide, hydrochloride, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen methane, and many other gases it depends upon the location of the volcanoes. And emission and fallout of inorganic compounds like heavy metals, mercury, lead, coal that can uh, can uh, I mean uh, that can also call the health impacts. Earthquakes, that are the main reason, I mean the main uh, impact of these uh, volcanoes uh, that uh, violent explosions can be caused and can cause shaking of the earth's surface. And if these uh, volcanoes happen in the oceans and that can create a tsunami uh, because of strong seismic events uh, by the volcanoes. And the damage that is caused by the volcanic eruption is the damage by the flowing lava. What I was saying that it creates damage to the vegetation, house, infrastructure, road, railways, harbors, whatever comes in uh, front of the lava. And damage by the fallout of the volcano, basically the fallout uh, of immense quantity of volcanic material, including fragmental material, dust, ash, smoke, covers the ground surface and thus destroys the crops, vegetation, buildings, disrupts and diverse and natural drainage system, creates the health hazard due to poisonous gases and emitted uh, during the eruption and causes acid rains. This can also cause acid rain. Then human casualties. This is also the damage caused by the volcanic eruptions. All types of volcano eruption, if not predicted well in advance, can cause tremendous loss to the precious human lives. Sudden eruption, sometime of wall, violent and explosion type of central uh, pipe does not give any time to human population. Basically, if it is a fissure type, it gives some time when the lava flows. But when there is an explosion type of volcanoes, it gives very less time uh, I, to the people living in adjacent areas of the volcano to move to the safer locations. And the uh, third one is damage to the, due to the tsunami generated uh, by the volcanic eruptions. Basically, earthquakes caused before and after the undersea volcanic eruption generate destructive tsunami waves, which create most destructive and dangerous sea waves, causing uh, innumerable deaths of the human beings in the affected coastal areas. So this is also uh, very dangerous and damage to man-made and natural features. The fallout basically of the volcanic uh, material comprised of lava and fragmental uh, materials, ash, soot, associated rainfall, destroy the human settlements, infrastructure such as buildings, transport, rail, roads, airports, and communication systems, supply lines, water and oil pipelines, electricity, and uh, on other hand, uh, it creates uh, problems for the lakes, rivers, and natural vegetation. Uh, this is quite, uh, I mean, dangerous uh, damage. I mean, then volcanic dust and climate change. Basically, enormous quantity of dust and ashes emitted into the sky during the volcanic eruption have been associated with weather and climatic changes at a regional or global level. It has been established by several atmospheric uh, scientists that formation of dust wheels in the stratosphere due to volcanic eruption causes lowering of the temperature of the Earth's surface and lowering of atmosphere can uh, because of the dust that reduce the amount of uh, solar radiation reaching the Earth's surface as they scatter and reflect some of uh, the amount of incoming shortwave uh, solar radiation. And the dust wheels do not hinder in the loss of heat of the earth surface, uh, I mean the outgoing long wave radiations. 
So in other ways, uh, the stratospheric dust wheel does not block outgoing uh, radiation, and it can, in, uh, I mean, it can intensify the greenhouse effect, and it can uh, also be uh, correlated when there is a release of carbon dioxide. That is one of the um, most leading type of greenhouse gas. And it can co also cause ecological changes. Uh, basically, uh, uh, some of the ecological changes like the burning of the forests, vegetation, settlement. So definitely, it uh, creates problem for the natural ecosystems. So these are the cause damages that are caused by the volcanic eruptions. So, what are the management of the volcanic eruptions? So, before managing uh, the steps and measures for reducing the or managing the volcanic eruptions, we have uh, to formalize certain uh, steps. For example, for, first we have to do the assessment and analysis of the vulnerability to the volcanic eruption. So, in an area, we have to assess whether the volcano is active or not. Then we have to assess the, uh, do the risk assessment of impending volcanic disaster, then disaster preparedness, volcanic disaster response. Basically, these are the activities which are uh, the which are based on three steps, like the pre-disaster, disaster, and post-disaster activities. First, we have to do the assessment that uh, whether the volcano is active or not. When, if it is active, then we have to see the risk, basically the probability and possibility that the volcano disaster can happen. So if the volcano disaster happen in future, what are our preparedness uh, for that? How we, uh, how well or how well we are not prepared to the disaster that, uh, that makes our disaster preparedness. And then what, uh, kind of the preparedness uh, response uh, systems we have when the uh, basically the disaster happens. So when we go for the preparedness about the disaster, we have done the assessment like we have various kinds of uh, the geologists, geographists who can identify which area is highly volcano activity. And then we have uh, also discussed what are the various areas on the globe which are very uh, high volcano active, but at the uh, what are the various ways by which we can reduce the impact? That is the mitigation and the preparedness towards the disaster. First is identification of existing volcanoes and mapping of volcano hazard zones. First, we have to identify the area and then hazards that can be created by the volcanoes. Then predictability and prediction of impending volcano eruption determination of seismic hazard probability and dependent eruption probability, evaluation and assessment of vulnerability of buildings, roads, basically how well our uh, evacuation and assessment plants are have been milled uh, to evacuate from certain highly volcano vulnerable area through the roads or other networks. Then social preparedness and assessment and probability of bad reactions of all the society and certain segments of the human population vulnerability of information system and management of media. I, this, I, I guess these words are self-explanatory. And rescue system, efficiency, time of intervention and capability, efficiency of health sector, facility. Basically, these all things improve our mitigation and preparedness towards the volcanic eruptions. And then general awareness about danger and adverse effect of volcanic predictability. So these are the various uh, ways by which we can reduce the uh, by which we can reduce the impact of uh, the the volcanic eruptions. So in general awareness that, for example, we should avoid uh, the slopes of the volcanoes for the settlements. This comes under the awareness. Avoid the historic pathways uh, from the of the mud flow or lava flows. Use air filters or enter masks during the volcanic eruptions that should be made available to the population uh, which are living in that area like use of goggles to protect eyes avoid weak structures cover inlet of the houses with the filter that or close them to prevent entry of toxic gases so these are the various i mean the general awareness that would be uh, mitigate the impacts of the uh, uh, area so but other elements that uh, encompass the general preparedness about uh, the further 
identification, demarcation of mapping of volcanic hazard zones to prepare inventory of valuable uh, property, for example, at the time of volcano eruption, what kind of material we have to evacuate. We cannot evacuate everything. So identification of safe refuge zones and evacuees, identification of evacuation routes, demarcation of points for the assembly of personnel awaiting for the transportation work in going to the safe zones. Basically, this encompasses over the capability at governmental, NGO level or community level. Provision for the easily available means of transport, proper shelters and accommodation in the refugee camps or areas, inventory of personnel and equipment for the search and rescue, provision of hospitals and medical services for the treatment and injured people, proper security arrangements should be made, provision of emergency alert, and warnings, communication, emergency, and formulation of management plan. So these all comes under the preparedness mitigation. But at the time of uh, the post disaster, uh, what activities we are going to at the time when already the volcanic eruption happened and that it creates destruction. So over focus should be on three activities. That is uh, rescue and relief, recovery and rehabilitation. In rescue, and uh, we should first I uh, only, I mean, the effect to prevent measures for damaging impact. I mean, the first we have to go for the search of the people which have been entrapped into the volcanic uh, disaster, for example, in the ashes or lava. So after that, we can rescue them or then we can evacuate them. Then in the recovery, first we have to at least build houses for them or uh, we should give some kind of, I mean, uh, relief like the clothes, uh, food, uh, some medicine, so that that can get recovered from the sh shocks of the volcanic eruption or psychological impacts that can be reduced by the counseling. So last one is evacuation. We can, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, rehabilitation. We can rehabilitate uh, the population to the safer areas so that they cannot be impacted again when the volcanic eruptions happen. So this all encompasses the various uh, management activities uh, that can be done during the volcanic eruptions. Thank you.